welcome to the Law School Insider, where we have conversations with students, lawyers, and employers. Succeeding in law school is something that you must prepare for, not only before you begin, but throughout your law school journey, and that's what this podcast is all about. I am your host, Dr. Christopher Lewis, and I will draw from my over 20 years of experience in the college admission field, as well as bring forth the experiences of others as we delve deeper into the issues. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Law School Insider. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Lewis. I'm so excited to have you back again this week. This week, I'm really excited because we have a great guest. We are bringing you Dean Nelson Miller, who is the Dean of the Grand Rapids campus at Western Michigan University Cooley Law School. And he is joining us to talk about what you need to be thinking about as a first-term law student to be able to be successful. Now, we've had a lot of people on the show in the past that have talked about success in a lot of different ways, but have never had a law school dean of a campus be on the show to talk about their perspectives. And they see students from all walks of life come through their doors. So I'm really excited to be able to have him on the show and to let him share some of his own experiences and his thoughts on success. So Dean Miller, thanks so much for joining us this week. It's good to be here. Very happy to participate. I am so excited to have you on this week because I know uh, we've had an opportunity to work together in the past, and I know that the opportunities that you have working with students allows you to see students from many different walks of life, and you get to see some of the success metrics that they have to go through to be able to be successful. So I wanted to have you give some of your thoughts, and maybe let's start from the very beginning. You know, a, a new student walks through the door, they come into class for that first week, and maybe they have you for their first class. You know, what are you looking for in regards to them being successful, let's say first in the first week, and then we'll go beyond that. Absolutely. Uh, It's interesting that I see prospective students really as early as open houses, sometimes months or even years before they arrive, and often get the question before they arrive, before, before they've even made a firm commitment to attend law school, how they might best prepare. And so I made a good survey of the resources available and ended up with faculty here uh, at my campus uh, writing a book about going to law school, um, thinking you know, very deliberately about what would get a student off on the right foot. And even before they take their first class, you know, arrive for orientation and you know, begin to attend their first class, I think it's important that students understand why they chose law school. And some reflection on this, interviewing some of our graduates has given me an opportunity to see that Many students attend because they are really trying to sort of reinvent themselves. Others have no interest in any reinvention. They really just want to extend in some respect what they, the skills they already have or develop further in the job they currently have. Other students attend because they have a special affinity, maybe for a cause or maybe for a community, and they recognize that a law degree can help them with that. Others just have a general sense of wanting to sort of uh, achieve some personal fulfillment. And then others use law school for exploration. So even before students start and in the first week, uh, we encourage them at orientation and I encourage them in class to think about those commitments and to preserve those commitments and to pursue those goals that made them choose law school. So that's the first step. Know why you are here and it should really help. Do you find that students end up changing what those commitments are as they go through their courses and as they move throughout their law school experience? Oh, a great question. And by all means, they do. A student who may be seeking some kind of maybe reinvention, I need a fresh start, may quickly realize that they already have considerable skills or experience or contacts or networks on which they can draw once they get legal training in law school. By contrast, a student who may assume or believe that their you know goal is to remain in their current job, but sort of extend themselves, maybe promote themselves, promote their current careers, often enough students discover that they have very special other opportunities in a completely different direction. So we find, I think, that students do change their goals. We don't, I don't at least, deliberately encourage them to do so, but certainly the program we design to expose them to many different opportunities so that they can you know, kind of look around a little bit and maybe discover something new and fresh and exciting for which they do have an affinity where they can pursue a passion. So yes, students do change when they get here, although we do encourage them to confirm their commitments and bring their values and and ambitions here and preserve them. Appreciate you sharing that. Now, 
once those students have taken the steps of being able to identify what those commitments are and what has really brought them into law school, they walk into class for the first day. What are you looking for as a professor, as a dean? What are you looking for from that student? Well, sure. When they actually arrive, I think it's important that they quickly grasp what law school is. They may understand why they're attending, but they may not truly appreciate sort of the shape or form of the program. And in this respect, law schools have different missions. Here at you know, my school, our law school, we understand the mission very clearly, and that's access to practice. Um, are you interested in helping others? That's really the critical question for us, because we will help you acquire the skills, knowledge, and the ethics and identity to do so. All law schools do, though, have uh, traditional structures of the program, and that really does begin with law knowledge. And so I'm hoping that as students arrive and you know begin to encounter that first week and and go through the uh, courses they have each class that first week, that they're appreciating what comprises the core curriculum, the core knowledge base, really for every law school. My subject is torts. Now, that's an unusual subject. Many students don't understand it until they quickly come to appreciate, even in the first week, that's the law of care. Every society must have individuals who care for one another, or at least care enough, uh, enough not to injure one another, And so I hope that in the first week, the students quickly appreciate how profound, how fundamental each of their subjects, each of those subjects uh, is. And that's that's an important goal, because once students appreciate the relevance of their studies, uh, students tend to commit to those studies, appreciate, engage in those studies. So I think that's really the, the first accomplishment when you get to law school is know why you're studying certain subjects so that you're fully engaged in them. Now, as a student moves on and they start to gain that grasp of, of what they're studying and why they're studying it, they, they have an understanding of kind of the direction that they're going for themselves. Are there things that you have seen successful students do to be able to move themselves forward sooner, whether it be in the first term or beyond, to get to the next step, kind of their educational journey? Oh, absolutely, uh, Chris. The, you could reduce a lot of the question of how you succeed to the idea of sort of work drive or work ethic. Um, some students just come with a passion, with an energy, with a discipline, and those students tend to get more out of the experience. Uh, there's more to it than just simply committing to the work and then actually actually doing it. A lot of it has to do with knowing who will help at the law school. And you can think of it as uh, certainly the professors. Those students who access their professors see their visit their professors outside of the classroom. You know, go to the office with questions or even without questions for career guidance or just for, for affirmation of some of the things that they're understanding and appreciating about the program. Those tend to be the students, those who are accessing the support outside the classroom who, who thrive. It's not just the professors, though. It's certainly the staff members at the school. Those may be academic support staff members. They may be career advisors, even you know, around registration and, and financial aid and things like that. The moment students have needs or even before they have needs to go and visit with staff members and to get to know them and to have their support can be really critical to being able to keep an appropriate focus on the studies. And then the students who appreciate that other students are their supporters tend to be the students who thrive. Those students who support others and then draw on the help of other students uh, really do find that they have not only the social network, but even the expertise of other students. That is how they study best, what resources are available, and just how how to navigate the program. So I think a lot of it has to do with who will help, knowing who will help, and being willing to go and reach out to them. Now, you talked about the the networks that you build, and I know that you've seen a lot of students that have probably either, one, been able to build a, a, a strong network for themselves, and you've probably seen students that have been very insular and have gone through the experience very isolated. And have you found that there are certain things that help those students that have built that strong network for themselves to be able to build that so that they don't have to go through it alone? Oh, by all means. One thing is the information, the solutions, the resources, the you know, sort of just the support often come to us more quickly when we have a broader network. We all have networks, but 
one of the sort of fundamental goals, I think, of professionals is that we think we should thicken our networks or increase the expertise that we hold within these networks. That's certainly true for lawyers. It's also true for, say, accountants or psychologists or social workers that we draw on the skills of one another. It's not simply what we can do for a client, let's say, but you know, what somebody else can do, an accountant again, or uh, maybe even a physician can do for a client. Same is true, I think, for law students as they begin to pursue this professional career and acquire these professional skills. Students should be developing and thickening their networks in a way that they can get answers more quickly. And the answers might be something as simple as a little bit of health care. You know, is there a clinic nearby where I can get some antibiotics or some pain relief or something else? But it could be something specific to the program, the program of legal education, whether that's registration or financial aid or, you know, finding the right resource or finding the right answer to a specific uh, law question. So sort of thickening one's net, you know, network is a wise practice for professionals generally. And I think the sooner that students reach out for you know, help and even not so much for help, but just to find out who could help in the event that they need it, uh, the better off they'll do in their health, their circumstances, their relationships, um, even discovering study places, using the technology correctly, and then developing the, you know, the law knowledge and skills in themselves. Sure. Now, as students finish up their first term, you know, they get ready for exams as a professor and as a dean. I know that you have had students take your exams or you've seen students taking many exams at your campus. Are there any tips that you might throw out there for students as they are thinking about not only the differences between undergraduate and law school exams, but also thinking about how they should start to think differently and to prepare for the final culmination of a course? Oh, again, by all means, because the examination in law school is really a professional examination. It's asking students to do something much like what they would do in practice. It is quite different from undergraduate examination. In many undergraduate programs, the idea is to acquire knowledge and repeat it back in, in essence. And that's not true of um, every undergraduate program, but a lot of it can be simply that. That is definitely not the goal uh, in, in law school. Certainly, the acquisition of knowledge is critical uh, to becoming a good, effective lawyer, but it's really the use of the knowledge. Uh, law is sort of an applied, it is definitely an applied science. So the idea is not simply to you know, memorize things, but instead to use it. So when it comes to examination, the idea then is to practice the examination and practice the examination early and often. Multiple choice and essay questions are the traditional form of law school examination, certainly for doctrinal courses. And that's true in part because the bar exam is multiple choice and essay questions in most states. And so the idea is not simply to acquire the knowledge, but also to practice it, to use it, to apply it. And so from week one, or at least week two, maybe, um, I think most of the professors here, maybe all the professors here, encourage students to be practicing multiple choice, practicing essay questions. And of course, here at our campus, here at our law school, we have multiple interim assessments, quizzes, in effect. I use four uh, graded quizzes throughout uh, my 15-week course, so students get uh, a lot of practice, uh, even in graded examinations, and a lot of feedback early. So lots of practice, lots of feedback. That's really the key to successful examination. I appreciate you sharing that because I know that sometimes that can be very stressful and students find that that culmination can be very difficult for them. Now, for students that are having a, some difficulties, having difficulties not only maybe in the, in the final exams, but having difficulties in the transition, having difficulties going through law school with the, the barrage of knowledge, with the amount of kind of the balancing of everything that you have to take in, are there things that you might say to them from your vantage point? That would help that would end up helping them to better grasp what they could be doing from the very beginning to lessen that stress for themselves? Well, good question. And certainly a, a percentage of students, maybe a significant percentage of students, well, let me put it this way probably all students at some point meet their match, their academic match in law school. That was certainly true for me. I think it is true for nearly all students. 
It's a challenging program. We designed it to be challenging. We want students to work in that zone of proximal development, students to extend themselves. So students often do feel a sense of struggling, but that's how we learn. That's how we get better. Well, if it's, you know, physical performance, that's how athletes improve their physical performance. Uh, But it's also how we improve our academic performance, but in a sense, struggling. So it's not unusual for students to find some frustration maybe in the studies. Uh, We actually want to push them to that point. The key, though, is to persevere. It's both to persevere and then to adjust. We try to give students frequent feedback, interim assessments through practice resources so that students can quickly adjust. We don't want students to go through a whole term, for example, and face a final exam and only then realize that they haven't acquired the knowledge or the skills. So again, it's sort of back to that early practice, early and frequent practice with guided feedback for students who are especially struggling, you know, and that might be, you know, one out of five students who by the end of the first term, they really haven't figured out some of the basic you know, sort of logical methods that law school applies. They'll usually get it pretty quickly in the second term. So even persisting beyond those first term struggles, there are many studies of law students and a good percentage of them really do need a full first term before they really begin to figure out how it is that lawyers reason and how to perform you know, to the standard. So perseverance and then access to resources and frequent practice under guided feedback, those are really the keys, even for a student who is facing some special struggle. And of course, we do have academic support officials, officers, faculty members, staff members who provide that support. And they, just as I do, they wait in their offices and, and for students to come and then they pursue. We, we pursue students who we feel need the help. So students shouldn't hesitate to access those resources. We're here for you. As students are going through this experience as well, I'm sure that there have been many students that you have seen that have hit some barriers, that have hit some pitfalls. And are there certain barriers, certain pitfalls that you see a majority of your students hit at some point in that first term that could be avoided? And if so, what are they and what are some of the the things that they could be doing differently? Well, that's really, again, a good question, because I think the pitfalls or challenges fall into, you know, a couple or a few different categories. One of them we've already been discussing, and that really has to do with sort of the study disciplines, uh, that is, knowing the habits and practices that are necessary for any strong academic performance. One of the other things that we know is that reading for law, reading to learn law is a different kind of reading. I mean, we all read the same way, but you're reading for a different purpose. And so I know that at our orientation, we focus a good deal on learning how to read cases, for example, but even to read statutes so that students will quickly adjust in their reading. I'll give you a quick example. I in my undergraduate program, read everything three or four times and just was able to sort of memorize everything. You can't read everything in law school three or four times. You just, there's too much to read. So the point of reading is different. You read for a purpose. That's really the key to extract the priority information. So we'll do any number of things to help students learn how to read differently, to help them confirm those good study disciplines. But then there are a couple of other interesting things that go along with kind of making that adjustment and getting to success. One is context. Law is contextual. Uh, Every client has either maybe a criminal law matter or a family law matter or an estate planning matter, maybe a business matter. Sometimes it's a technical matter having to do with engineering and products liability cases or securities regulation, something, something corporate of that nature, or maybe even intellectual property. And Students often come without that context. Students come from nursing programs. Students come from teaching programs. Uh, Students come directly from undergraduate programs where they've studied political science and not a great deal else. So we're doing a lot to try to help students acquire the context, whether, again, that's business or engineering or accounting or any other field, even just in life, whether it's family relationships having to do with estate, you know, planning wills and trusts or even family relationships in divorce and child custody, or criminal law and all of its sort of many subfields. So we're very conscious that students are acquiring kind of life experience on the fly in these law programs, and we certainly help them with that. So kind of putting it all together, you know, academic skills, reading skills, and then those life skills 
and again, a, a law school that focuses on access to practice, uh, like our law school, I think is pretty effective at knowing what students need to get there from where they enter. Very important practice. This has been really eye-opening and very enlightening for me, but also I know for all of our listeners, for this is information that all of you should be listening to and, and really hearing what Dean Miller has to say, because everything that he is sharing today are, are pieces of the puzzle, things that are going to help you to be able to find success for yourself, because success looks differently for every different individual. And, and Dean Miller, I truly appreciate you being here today. We're definitely going to have you back again soon. And uh, I wish you all the best. Thank you. You are the best. Well, that was another great guest this week on the Law School Insider. If you have an interest in being a guest on the show, drop me an email at lawschoolinsider at cooley, C-O-O-L-E-Y dot E-D-U. And thank you all for listening today. And remember, you have the ability and right to take control of your law school's success. I hope you'll continue listening, creating a plan for success that will prepare you to achieve the dreams that you have set for yourself. Talk to you next time. Thanks for listening. You're on your way to being a law school insider. Please subscribe to stay connected and come back again next time as we speak to more students, lawyers, and employers. Mm-hmm.